hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is the end of the year book tag. So this tag was created by Ariel Bissett, and I will have the link to her channel and her video down below. You can check out the original video for the questions. But let's just jump right into it. So the first question on this list is, are there any books that you have started this year that you need to finish? And of course the answer is yes. Um, if you follow me on Goodreads, you know that I'm currently reading like six or seven books. But the reality actually is, is that I have started six books that I have put on pause. And then the seventh book is the book that I'm actually starting, reading, finishing, and then starting a new one. So I'm just gonna quick go through and mention the other six books that I have on my Goodreads that I've started, I do actually want to finish them. I do. So the most recent addition to that list is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I have read the first like chapter or two and I am very intrigued by this book. I think I just want to sit down and read it for a chunk of time. I am also on hold for the audiobook for this one, but there's no good reason for me not to have continued reading this. I really want to. The next one is one that I started back in the spring. It is called Sway With Me, and this is by Saeed M. Masood. And I started this one, and then I had a whole bunch of other TBRs that didn't include this book, so I put it down to finish those TBRs. So I do actually want to finish this one before the end of the year, just to kind of get it done and to determine if I actually want to keep it on my shelves. I have this arc, but I also have a hardcover finished copy. Next one is probably one of the oldest books on my Goodreads, and that is Wildcat by J.P. Harker. This was sent to me. It is self-published, so I'm less motivated to read it because it is self-published, but it does have to do with, like, Celtic Welsh mythology, and I feel like the vibes of this book are would be something that I would enjoy. It's just... It's a bit chunky, and I just, I gotta get it truly started and get into it. I read, like, the first chapter, and I was like, okay, I could see myself getting into this in a couple chapters. I just haven't continued since then. And then the next one is Where the Briars Sleep by Emma Babin. I have started this one, and I started it for spooky season last year. And then when spooky season ended, I wanted to read other books, and I just didn't get a chance to pick it up. I didn't pick it up this spooky season because there were so many other books I wanted to read. So I think I just need to, again, sit down and get this one done. This next one is a book that has been on many a TBR. That is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. I have not finished this one because I don't want the Ark of the Scythe trilogy to end. However, he did just come out with another book called Gleanings, and it's like, I think it's like an accompaniment book to the Ark of the Scythe. It's in the same world, but I don't know if it's necessarily following the same plotline, but from a different perspective, or as a new thing, I'm not sure. But now that that book is out, I should really finish reading this, and then I can pick that one up. And this won't have to necessarily be the end, but it's also very chunky, but I read Thunderhead very quickly for how thick it was, so it shouldn't- I shouldn't be intimidated by the chunk. I just- I don't want it to end. But I- but I seriously need to read it before I forget everything that happened in the second book. The final book that I have started and not finished It's going to appear in the vlog. The thing is, is that once I finish this book, book, I can finish a vlog, and then I can finally post the vlog, and I really want to post it in December. So, <laughs> I need to finish this book. And that is What Once Was Mine. This is by Liz Braswell. It's one of the Disney Twisted Tales. It is the Rapunzel Twisted Tale from Tangled. What if Rapunzel's mother drank a potion from the wrong flower? So... It's as if Rapunzel's mother drank from the moonflower instead of the sunflower. How would that affect Rapunzel's powers and what happens, etc. and so forth. So, I this sounds really good. I, like I said, I have a reading vlog of reading all of these. However, since I've started the vlog and now when I am reading the final Twisted Tale that I haven't read, 
another one has actually come out almost there so I am debating depending on how quickly I get this read I don't know if I want to add on almost there to the vlog or just post it as is because that's how I started it because these books are probably just gonna keep coming out but we'll see so this is the last one that I really need to read question number two do you have an autumnal book to transition you into the end of the year yes and this is the question that always like reminds me that this tag is generally done at the end of autumn not at the end of the actual year um, and the book I've chosen for this, I've seen so many people talk about and say that they love it. I initially, for some reason, thought it was a graphic novel, but it is not. I don't know why I thought it was a graphic novel. But that is Legends and Lattes, and this is by Travis Baldry. So I've chosen this book to be my autumnal transition book of the year because it is... It gives me very D&D vibes where you've got this retired, you've got this adventurer who goes out and does these epic battles and whatnot and she just wants to be done with it and open up a little tavern and do coffee, you know, do espresso, do lattes, do mochas, things like that. And it just sounds adorable, it sounds really comfy. The um, cover gives me very autumnal vibes just with the, the brown and the green. The colors are very autumnal, but I think it'll be a nice cozy read to get into as the weather gets colder and I'm going to be wanting to drink more hot coffee and it kind of transitions into winter. So this is what I will be using for that. Question number three is, is there a new release you are still waiting for? And the answer to that is yes. Coming out in early December is a book called A Million to One, and this is by Adiba Jagirdar. And this book, let me tell you, I believe it is a heist on the Titanic. Need I say more? No, I don't need to say more, because that's all that hooked me into it. You know what it's about now, and that's why I really want to read it. Question number four. Uh, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? So obviously I have plenty <laughs> that I want to read before the end of the year, but I've chosen the, these three to talk about because I think they are the most likely that I am actually going to read by the end of the year. So the first one is In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is a leftover from Spooky Season. I wanted to read it during the Thriller Week. I didn't quite get to it. But I just got the audiobook for it, so I think I will have a much easier time settling down to read this with the audiobook and the physical book, and I can just immerse myself in the spookiness of this book. Plus, I have kind of learned about myself and realized that I love isolation thrillers, especially in the winter. So, obviously, spooky season is like thriller season, but... In the winter, I do also really love a good isolation thriller, and I'm not quite sure if that's what this is. I think they're in a cabin in the woods or something, but yeah, whether it is or not, that is something I've learned about myself, and so I do want to read this thriller in the winter or before the end of the year. And the next two books are holiday books. I think they're both Christmassy books, which is why I think I'm going to finish them by the end of the year and uh, why I really want to finish them at the end of the year rather than earlier or next year. So the first one is Kiss Her Once For Me and this is by Alison Kotram and this features a bisexual main character who has a one night stand with this girl. I think it's a one night stand. I don't know, but she feels very heartbroken by this person because she learned something about them that wasn't super, like, like it threw her for a loop, she wasn't happy about it. Sad, sad. And then she ends up losing her job at the animation studio that she was working at. It was her dream job and now it is gone. So she has to work at a cafe just to try and make ends meet. And the cafe owner drunkenly gives her a proposal that they do a fake marriage fake dating to fake marriage so that he can get access i think to his inheritance and because his family is rich she would be set financially and doesn't have to work at his cafe and could start pursuing her career again however so he says that to really sell it that they need to spend the holidays in his family's cabin except guess who his sister is just guess the one night stand. 
which makes me love the title of this book. Like, I get it's a Christmas pun because, like, all holiday romances are puns. But this one I'm actually okay with. The other one is A Very Merry Romance, and this is by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the fifth and newest book in the Bromance Book Club series, which if you watch my videos or even just paid attention a little bit earlier in this video, you'll know that I love the Bromance Book Club. I have read all the books in the series and I love them so much and so this one is out. I really want to read it and it's Christmas holiday themed so it fits super well so obviously I want to read it this year. So it's going to be a top priority. Question number five. Is there a book that could shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Now I'm going to say yes. I think there is one book that could be my favorite. I have yet to go through and look at all the books I read this year and say, oh, so far this is my favorite of the year because I don't remember anything that I read, which is why I write it all down in my bullet journal. But I know there is one book that could. I'm not sure if it will, but it definitely has the potential, but I also see where it definitely doesn't have the potential. So that's Babel by R.F. Guam. This is Dark Academia featuring magic through languages, which that has the potential to be my favorite. As someone who studies multiple languages and that is my passion, and I love fantasy as well as Dark Academia, this book has all the makings to be my favorite book of the year. The only thing I'm hesitant about is the kind of political background or, you know, the more complexities of the school and the cities and I don't know because I haven't read it. But there is a little something some holding me back from thinking this could be my favorite. But if anything were to go surpass whatever book is currently my favorite, I think this is the only one that has a chance. So. And I cannot believe I put off reading this book for so long already. Like I've had this book for a month and I haven't read it yet something's wrong there. And then the final question, question number six is, have you started making plans for next year? Next year being 2023. Yes, of course I have. Um, I am a planner. That is what I do. Other than being a mood reader, I'm a huge planner. So I will elaborate, but not give much detail. 2023 is going to be such a year for me. We have a lot of big life events going on in 2023 that we are planning for now. And so because of that, I am thinking of how I'm going to plan my bookish content around it. I'm going to need to do a lot of pre-filming for next summer as we will be traveling, but then also how those traveling can create content. And when will I do that? Will I do it while I'm traveling or after I'm traveling? So I'm planning about that. But I will also be filming a goals for 2023 video because there are some things that I tried out on my channel this year and with my reading life this year that I may not want to keep or I might want to change or I might just start something new. So I am starting to plan for that video. So I am making all kinds of plans for 2023. And if you are interested in hearing what those plans are, I recommend subscribing so that you can get notified when that video goes up. I post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. However, with December being the end of the year and January beginning being the beginning of the year, obviously, I get the feeling I will be posting way more than two videos a week. So definitely, if you are interested in bookish content or anything, subscribe now so that when I start posting more videos, you're notified. Cause as I said, I will always post on Sundays and Wednesdays, but when I post extra videos during the week, I don't have like a set day or a set time that they are going to be posted. They will just be posted when they are ready to be posted. So the best way to stay on top of things is to subscribe. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, comment down below any of your answers to any of these questions. If you're making plans for next year, what books do you have to transition to the end of the year or that you need to finish before next year? What are you looking forward about? I don't know. But this is like the first video in a whole bunch of videos that I have planned that are going to be about like finishing the year and starting next year. So 
keep that in mind. I also have bookish social media in the description below that you can follow me there so you can see what I'm reading and what I think about what I'm reading. Thank you all very much for watching this video again and until I see you in the next one, I wish you happy reading. Thank you.